Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so those who haven't subscribed, please do subscribe so that I will get motivated to do more and more uh, videos in future. So in this session, I will be dealing with the topic development of thyroid gland. Actually, the development of thyroid gland is a topic with lots of controversies. So I would like to uh, take a session which I believe is true. So the development of thyroid gland. So before viewing this session, I would like all of you to see a session on the pharyngeal apparatus which I have done weeks back. Uh, so this is a view of the pharyngeal arches. So if you we know that there are many pharyngeal arches on the ventral aspect of the neck and if you just take it out and see from the inner aspect this is the inner aspect of the pharyngeal arches and this is actually lined by endoderm. So uh, if you have uh, seen the session on the development of tongue it will be easy for you. So there are two lingual swellings. So these pharyngeal arches are actually develop, developing from either side and they will be ultimately fusing in the midline. So the first arch when they fuse when they go to fuse in the midline their ends will be bearing two swellings they are known as the lingual swellings and between the first arch and second arch there is a small swelling in the midline it is a single swelling that is known as tuberculum impar tuberculum impar so behind the tuberculum impar and just um, at the junction of the first and second arch you can see a very small foramen this foramen is known as foramen cecum so what happens at this point so there is a proliferation or down growth from this point like this okay so the through the tongue there is a down growth uh, in the midline from this point so this point is known as foramen cecum so there is a endodermal down growth and it will lie in front of the trachea in the neck and as it reaches the neck it will be dividing into a bilobed mass okay so the lower end of this duct will be uh, developing into a bilobed mass so this uh, downward growth is known as thyroglossal duct so it starts from the tongue at a point just behind the tuberculum impar and it will just pass through the tongue and it will uh, be passing uh, in the neck in front of the trachea so how far will it grow uh, will it grow down so what is the factor which controls the growth downwards so uh, when we discussed about the endodermal pouches we have mentioned about a term known as caudal pharyngeal complex caudal pharyngeal complex which is nothing but a complex formed by the two important pouches the fourth and fifth pouch so this caudal pharyngeal complex has got three elements out of which one element is known as the lateral thyroid element lateral thyroid element so there will be lateral thyroid element on either side and this will act as a check uh, tissue for the downward growth of the thyroglossal duct so beyond one point this won't allow the thyroglossal duct to grow downwards and this will actually uh, get fused with the thyroglossal duct the bilobed mass which is seen at the lower end of the thyroglossal duct so uh, there are actually many theories some theories say it is from the caudal pharyngeal complex you have the two lobes of the thyroid gland developed but i would like to believe that uh, the two bilobed mass which is formed at the caudal end of the thyroglossal duct will be giving rise to the lateral thyroid lobes and this caudal pharyngeal complex is actually giving rise to the para follicular cells c cells the para follicular cells of the thyroid gland that is how the thyroid gland is derived and once this thyroid gland is derived so you know that it is a butter butterfly shaped gland so you know uh, these are the two lobes of the thyroid gland and this connection is known as the isthmus so once this gland is formed that is the lateral lobes from the bilobed mass of the lower end of the thyroglossal duct and the parafollicular cells from the caudal pharyngeal complex once this development is complete this thyroglossal duct will actually degenerate and the cranial most end will be seen on the dosum of the tongue as the foramen cecum that is exactly so if you just consider this as the tongue you know that the, it is divided into anterior two-third and posterior one-third by the sulcus terminalis so this is sulcus terminalis this v-shaped uh, sulcus is known as sulcus terminalis and it's at its apex we have this 
foramen cecum. So foramen cecum is nothing but the cranial most end of the thyroglossal duct which is seen as a remnant. And sometimes what happens is the caudal end may persist uh, and will be seen connected to the isthmus of the thyroid gland and this is known as the pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland. So the caudal most end of the thyroglossal duct may, see, may be seen sometimes persisting and it will be seen connected to this isthmus of the thyroid gland and that is known as the uh, pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland. And sometimes the entire duct will be persistent and that condition is known as persistent thyroglossal duct. Sometimes the duct won't be persistent throughout the course. It will be seen as encysted swellings. So uh, if you just see that this is a lateral view, sometimes this will be seen as encysted masses. So this is known as thyroglossal cyst, thyroglossal cyst. And if this cyst communicates with the exterior, you call it as thyroglossal fistula. So these are the different uh, conditions which you get if this thyroglossal duct is not actually getting degenerated completely. So the normal remnant is the cranial most end that is the foramen cecum. Uh, if the caudal end is persisting, it might be seen as the pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland. If in course of the thyroglossal duct, in, at some regions this is persisting as a cyst that is known as thyroglossal cyst and if this cyst is actually communicating with the exterior you call it as thyroglossal fistula and uh, there are conditions where you might get the thyroid gland in the tongue uh, above the hyoid bone below the hyoid bone sometimes it might reach into the thoracic cavity in the mediastinum just behind the sternum so all these are options different options where you get abnormal thyroids that is along the course of the thyroglossal duct anywhere if the growth is actually uh, stopped all of a sudden sometimes it started from the foramen cecum in the tongue it, it it's not growing down what happens the thyroid gland will develop in the tongue so if you just take a section of the tongue this is a foramen cecum if this is not growing down you will get a thyroid gland in the tongue on the dosum of the tongue that is known as lingual thyroid thyroid sometimes it will start growing down but it will uh, get arrested in the mat in the, within the uh, muscles of the tongue then you will call it as intralingual thyroid intralingual thyroid sometimes it will grow again further so you, here you have the hyoid bone and it might get arrested above the hyoid bone you call it as suprahyoid thyroid Sometimes it will go, grow again further down and it will get arrested just below the hyoid. So you call it as infrahyoid thyroid. Sometimes it will just grow down and down and it will reach into the superior mediastinum. So it won't get uh, arrested in the neck. So what happens if it reaches a thoracic cavity and if it lies behind the sternum, you call it as retrosternal thyroid. So these are all different positions. Uh, you can expect uh, in course of development of the thyroid. Sometimes uh, you might get ectopic thyroids. Ectopic thyroid means the thyroid gland seen uh, elsewhere other than the normal course. So it, sometimes, sometimes it can be seen in the posterior triangle or anywhere else in the body. So that condition is known as ectopic thyroid. And sometimes along with this thyroid gland, you might get an additional thyroid glandular tissue that is known as aberrant thyroid gland. So these are the different anomalies which you can expect for the thyroid gland. So in a nutshell, the two components from which the thyroid is developed, one you have to remember about the thyroglossal duct and the other one is known as the caudal pharyngeal complex. So the main gland, the lateral lobes are formed from the thyroglossal duct and uh, the caudal pharyngeal complex is actually giving rise to the parafollicular cells. So that's all about the development of thyroid in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.